It is a region marked by violence, warlords, grinding poverty, and a festering rebellion. Yet for some mysterious reason, the population in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao appears to be booming at an unbelievable rate. In the 2007 census, the ARM registered an annual population growth of 5.46 percent, two and a half times the national average of just 2 percent. While growth rates in the country's 16 regions slowed, ARM's population growth outpaced even that of Metro Manila, a magnet for in-migration. So why is a region known more for guns and poverty experiencing a major population boom? You have to question some of the growth rates that you see in ARM. Why is it so high? The ARM data are so faulty that they should be removed entirely from the population uh, totals because it affects it. The National Statistics Office admits the ARM figures are problematic. In fact, the original growth rate they got for ARM was a whopping 10%, five times the national average. We did a lot of data cleaning. Mm -hmm. So after data cleaning, yung mga evaluation ano, procedures, we had to stop at some time. Eh. But why would anyone care about population figures? Demographers suspect it has a lot to do with money. The internal revenue allotment, or the money the national government gives to the local government, is based on land area and population. The bigger the population, the higher the internal revenue allotment. After the 2007 census, the IRA for ARM jumped by 27% to $8.7 billion, the largest for any region. Take the case of Maguindanao, which registered the highest population growth with an ARM of 6%. By 2009, Maguindanao was getting one of the highest IRAs nationwide, 3.2 billion pesos. Uh, over a billion for the province, over a billion for the municipalities, na marami namang magkakamag-anak ng mga magkapamilya, tapos over 600 billion for the barangays. So, magtatanong ka kung saan napunta yung napakalaking pera na galing sa national government. If it's uh, it's based on the number of people, then uh, if you make up more people, then you'll, have, uh, you'll be able to get more. Maguindanao is doubly curious. Florio Argilias of Cornell University analyzed the NSO data of year 2000. He found that aside from having a bloated growth rate, Maguindanao's population was also growing, where it counted the most for politicians, with voting aged people. There were more people aged 18 than people below 18. Population experts say a normal community should have babies as the largest age group, especially in a population that is said to be growing at an incredible rate. In, in fact, there's one barangay that doesn't have uh, children under two years old. So two years before the census, they, start, they stopped producing uh, children. Why is it that you have few births? Yeah. 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 And yet, uh, these are supposed to be survivors of of the births in the past five years. So who was responsible for the population figures? The National Statistics Office admits both local and national politicians try to influence the results of their census, but the pressure is greatest in areas that are conflict-ridden. Maguindanao is a special area. <laughs> yeah, I was asking them, I, we, we, in fact, we called the people to, to Manila. Yung, those who took charge. We asked them to explain. Interestingly, the NSO uses local teachers in administering the census, the same group that takes charge of the elections here, the same elections whose results have lately been in doubt. Uh, we suspect na na influence na rin yung enumerator because after all, he, if he belongs to the area. <laughs> in May 17 this year, teachers will go around again for the 2010 census whose results will be used to determine internal revenue allotments and craft national policy. That is exactly a week after they handled the 2010 elections. But in areas where local strongmen rule and national governance is non-existent, how do you expect teachers to count votes when they may already have a problem counting people? For the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, Ed Lingao.